what is what does this mean? What does this win mean to you, considering where you guys were after the Duquesne lost and yet haven't lost since, and just the way you guys have finished out the regular season? What what does this win mean to you in that context? Well, I think it says a lot about our guys. I think that we we were inconsistent throughout a, a number of games throughout the season, but I also think we've been resilient. So when we have gone down, we've also been able to get our pick ourselves back up. So I think that's what. Each, each team is so different. It's, uh, every, every team has a personality. If that's this personality of, of this particular group, of being in, inconsistent but resilient, they've done a good job uh, over these last stretch, this last stretch of games. Terry, what did you do? Well, what did you do well against their press today? You know, I thought we handled it pretty good. There were a couple of panic mode passes in the first half. I don't think we came to the ball a couple of times. I thought we. We jumped up in the air a couple of times, but for the most part, I thought we we watched enough film to see where there might be some uh, some opportunities to advance the basketball a little better than than, uh, than maybe we anticipated. So we I think we just we came to the ball hard, we squared up, and we made the next pass that, that got them off our back just a little bit. But there, that pressure is relentless. I think it, it's really a good basketball team. And, and they were knocking it out in the first half. I mean, six for six from three point line was pretty impressive. I was hoping that wasn't going to continue. Thank you. You guys have done enough that they, they should be an NCAA team. You know, Mike, I, I, it's totally for somebody else to decide. You know, we're we're going to concentrate on, um, I guess, the winner of UMass and GW on Thursday to see who will play on Friday. That's, you know, our job is is not nearly done. We need to we need to. Uh, Win games, and that's that's what we're thinking about. So we won't have any discussion about any of that over the next couple of days, and that, that'll be for somebody else to decide. Coach, you don't see a lot of games where the largest lead line says 16 for one team and 17 for the other. What what changed one to the other? You know that stretch in the first half, we we were in a timeout, and, and we were we were uh, we got rocked a little bit. We were punched in right in the forehead, and uh, but we talked about it a little bit that we had a. We started off pretty good. We, we looked like we knew what we were doing for the first four or five minutes of the game, and all of a sudden the, the whole tenor of the game changed. And they were making shots, and we weren't, and they were taking care of the ball, and we weren't. And, <coughs> but we just talked about the fact that they've made their run now, and I, I feel good about where we are. Not all that thrilled that we were down 16 points, but I felt like we had a chance to gather ourselves, and we made some big shots. I thought Jake made a big shot. And, We've made a couple of runners in the lane, those kind of things. It just kind of gathered us. So, so it's just it's just one of those things. Game, games are so different each and every every moment. And um, you know, they had their run, we had ours, and then we we just made shots in that second half. And I thought we handled the pressure when we did drive and kick. Some big shots went down. Scooty made a big one. Uh, Jake Buckets did his thing. <laughs> his, his points per shot are pretty incredible. So he, but he's done that all year. He's, he's, he can really score the ball. Daddy, well, what's your demeanor like when you're down 16 in a huddle? Um, you're naturally, I guess, placid and not easily rattled. But do you even think about how you're coming across? Yeah, I mean, uh, placid at, at some times. I, I appear placid. I have some other. I'm not sure what the opposite of placid is. Excitable. Excitable. Yeah, I, I do get excited every once in a while. But I, I, it depends on the opposition. It depends on how we're playing. There's a lot of things that go into what your mindset is, but today it was a, you know, again, I, we were down, but I thought we had a chance to, to regroup, and I had enough confidence in this particular group, and they did a great job. Frank, you talked early in the year about the inconsistency and everything that you had at times, and that it was tough to maybe get a read on what team you were going to get night in and out. Do you have a better read on that now that when you come out, you, you have a, a better idea of what you're going to see? There's still moments of inconsistency and still moments of, of not knowing what's what's happening. But I think for the most part, this group has now established themselves as a very resilient group, and now hopefully we can move on and, and do a good job in our conference tournament. So we're, uh, we've still got a long, long way to go, and we need to, we need to play our best basketball. We'll take tomorrow off and gather a little bit on Tuesday. and start looking at a lot of our film as to how we can do things better. Brandon, is this a more resilient team than the last couple of years? Yeah, I don't know that. I guess time will tell that. We'll, we'll see how we do in the uh, in the conference tournament. 
Grant, how, how difficult is it for a guard to remain emotionally under control against that kind of pressure? Are you suggesting that Khalif Wyatt was emotionally under control? <laughs> 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 well, you're a former guard of many, many yeah. years ago. You know, if indeed we're talking about, about Khalif, I mean, his feel for the game is, is pretty extraordinary. So there were times where he, you know, we, we talked all, all last couple of days about not having your face leave the rim. You can't be turning your back because they feel, feel that, they read that, and they go double. He did it a couple of times. I'm going to guess he did it a couple of times on purpose so to draw the double team so that he could skip the ball to the other side of the floor. But he, he made some really, really good decisions. And he turned it over four times. And two of those were one was a walk, one was a charge at half court, which I, I didn't think was a charge, but you know, the, the referee called it as it was. But he just has this feel and understanding of the game. And, and while he jumps up in the air, it, he ain't the best leaper I've ever seen. But he, he has such extraordinary ability to see the court that, you know, I wasn't surprised that he was so poised. And, and you can see what our guys do when they do get a little pressure, they're looking for him. And, and if I was playing with him, I would look for him too. Because he's really good that way. Franny had it in the tournament. Uh, it's the deepest A-10 you remember. This is as good as it gets. I mean, there's some really good basketball teams there. I thought last year was a really deep... Uh, group as well. Uh, we obviously got our comeuppance in the first game of, uh, of the Atlantic 10 tournament last year uh, by UMass. And we, we really need to, to understand how difficult this chore is going to be. I think these guys do. But it's a real deep leg and a really solid quality leg. And you don't, what you, is it about? I mean, it seems like the biggest moments are in your biggest moments when games like this and Syracuse and they just kind of rises to that. Yeah, I mean, he, he's got that flair, and, uh, you know, the one, he didn't shoot the ball well from the three-point line today, but the one w was, uh, you know, daggerish, and he rose up, and you knew he was doing it, you know, as if I have control over it anyway. You knew he was doing it, and he knocked it out, you know, so he's uh, he's an extraordinary player, and he's, I, I, I'm really reluctant to make this next statement, but, and so you can, you can choose not to report it if you would like. <laughs> But he might have played, and I'm waiting to see the film to really uh, to smack myself in the head if I'm, if I'm not right. But I thought his defense was as good as it's been all year long. So uh, you haven't heard me say that in a long time. So. And I might regret having said it today, but I have to give him credit. I thought he was right where he needed to be and kept people in front of him and did a really good job. Was it the way he played the passing lanes, too, with a couple yeah, of Yeah, a little bit of that, but he always does that. Mm -hmm. He takes way too many risks most of the time. I thought he was less risky today. Coach, you coached a long time. Is he one of the most unorthodox players? Because he gets from point A to point B different than most people in most games. Yeah, he's an extraordinary player. I've never coached anybody quite like him. And, and while he does not have great speed, he has really good quickness. But he know he just he feels the game as good as anybody you see. And you'll, you'll also see him, like, uh, you know, put himself back in games, you know, like he doesn't actually put himself in, but he's standing up like it's my turn, right? <laughs> and typically, I agree with him. Should he be a player here? Well, I, I, I hope that he gets a lot of consideration for that, Mike. Certainly, he's, uh, he's an extraordinary player who's had an extraordinary year in so many ways, and he's had a great career, uh, despite the fact that he didn't get much run in his freshman year, but he's done a terrific, terrific job, and, and I hope... Listen, I, I have great faith and trust in all those people that are voting, and they watch us play. And, and uh, certainly, he's had a wonderful year to to be amongst others uh, as you as you go through the ballot. But uh, I hope he gets that consideration. You want to say? How about Will's performance against this? Yeah, I thought he did a terrific job, and he made uh, you know a couple of plays he made in the second half. Uh, the three was a huge three that he made, and then really the foul shots were huge. They they stemmed the tide a little bit. And uh, so I, I thought he came of age today. I thought he had been coming of age, and I think he, today he, he went that last, uh, that last step, although the one play he made got, you know, like a lot of young kids will do, he got carried away driving it. There was no time going on the clock, and he's driving on the baseline. He's trying to get Jake another shot. We, we didn't need points at that point. We needed to run the clock a little bit. Now, if it's wide open, let's take advantage of it. But, but uh, I think he's come of age. You always say you hate senior day, you did, at least temporarily for the home game purpose of it. You had to say goodbye to five guys. And Was this one the toughest just because of who they are and what they meant to the program? Yeah, yeah, no question about it. I, I, 
I'm sure it's a Hallmark Day. Hallmark Corporation, I think, created Senior Day. <laughs> I don't. It's it's hard enough. It's emotional enough, and then you get all the families come out. And they're crying, and I'm crying, and you're. They're saying thank you, and I'm saying, have you been to any of our practices? Thank you for what? <laughs> so it's uh, it's an emotional day. I, I I wish we didn't have it. There's a lot of distractions out there. On a day like this, we changed all, all of our pregame routine, and you know, and then, uh, but these guys they made it through and they did a great job, and I'm very proud of them today. And as simple as it sounds, the key to their press is whether or not they're making shots. If they don't make the shot, they don't set up. If they do, they're, they're setting up and then they're scoring a bunch of scores and turnovers. Well, that, that's true, but they were making a, an extraordinary amount of shots today in the first half. They made 17 field goals in the first half, but we only turned it six times. And two of those were, Riley, I think, walked on the baseline the one time, and uh, I forget, uh, Khalif walked. Two walking calls, so it wasn't like we had gotten sped up to the point that we were throwing the ball away and, and some of those things. And we, we probably had more turnovers in the second half than we did in the first. But yeah, I mean, there, it's it's an extraordinary pressure, and you've got to deal with it, and it's it is truly havoc. And uh, but you practice a lot against it. We went five on six, we went five on seven a couple of times last couple of days just to try to get used to it. But there's nothing you can do to prepare for that because you just don't have any sense of how long and how quick and how how relentless this group is. So it's a really good win for us against a really good basketball team. When you said you were down 16, you still felt good. Would you have, I know you, as a coach, I didn't feel great. I just didn't well, think that we were very, <laughs> but would, you, would you have felt that? Would you have felt that way three or four weeks ago in the same situation? Or was there just something different where you thought that team has well, extra? I, I think it's a great question. And, and if, you, if I'm being honest with you and myself, probably not. Because we weren't who we are today, I just we have developed this resiliency, and I hope we can continue it. But there was a sense that you got from these guys that there was no panic in them, so the, the, it was, wasn't right for me to panic as well. So there's a lot of feeding off of the, the players that coaches do, and hopefully uh, there's some vice versa in that as well. But yeah, I felt good about about how they were handling. They were making shots. I didn't think they were going to make every shot they took in the second half, and, and uh, we did a little better job. Any questions?